It's John and Rachel. This is the Jagoff Late Night Podcast, episode number 14. We're just into the teens. We are not adolescents anymore. Right. So now we right. have it all figured out. Psych! But we do have it figured out that people are visiting us. There are people here today. There's an audience. And we love whenever we can talk to people and they can go over and make a drink and enjoy themselves. So here we are, 5000 McKnight Road. You could do that next week every Friday night, 5.30, so we hope we see you here. And if you miss coming here, don't forget you can watch it at 10 o'clock on YouTube and Facebook, and you can listen to it simulcast over Q92.9. The coolest part is, once you do that, you can subscribe to it, except for the radio, you can't subscribe to that, but you can set your alarm to every 10 o'clock Friday night, sit around, have a beer, some popcorn, some pizza, and listen or watch the Jagoff Podcast, so make sure you subscribe. Set an alarm also, because every morning, we don't bring you news per se, but we do tell you who Jags are. So we are term of endearment Jagoffs, but once in a while we have to call out people who are being Jags. Who do you have from the blog post? You did them all this week. Our good one this week was this robber who robbed about five different places in Stowe Township and McKees Rocks. Pretty much all in the same couple of days, but all in the same clothing with no mask. That's just, listen. So, you know, these days every place has a camera. Every right. house, every doorbell has a camera pretty much. So it's the guy in plain sight, his face, and the same maroon jacket. Robbery 101, place. don't wear the same clothes. Wear and I've disguise. never done right. it, and I And know. in Pittsburgh, especially this week, wear a Steeler jersey. You blend in with nine out of ten people. Exactly. Right. Speaking of, we are going to the Super Bowl. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but we are playing this weekend. In case you live under a rock, we're super excited because we even wore black and gold. Right. I mean, you have to go check out our tailgate today so that you could see... McDonald's, Three Rivers of McDonald's. Am I saying it right? McDonald's of Three Rivers. That's right. They are giving away chicken McNuggets, and all you have to do is literally spend $2. Now, That's if you're it. listening to this on Tuesday, the podcast, or watching it on Thursday, you lost, which means this is what you have to do. You have to be on it at 10 o'clock every Friday. There you go. Yeah. Right. All right. What else was on the blog? Because we don't want to throw everybody PTL off. PTL Game Show. <laughs> we tend to veer off of script. Yes, PTL, the game show. Every single year we do this. We started out that it was like a Palentine's Day thing. Mm -hmm. Then it became a tradition with us in Pittsburgh today live to figure out what game show do we want to play last year was wheel of yinzer this year name that tune yeah jag off there you go right. yeah so we're super stoked you guys we have not figured out are we going to make you do it in eight bars six bars we don't know the answer is we don't know but we're we still writing know. the rules right but we do know that we have team ptl and team you jag off we're playing for two different charities and it's at the pierce studios down in the cultural district so you can go to our website get tickets they're only ten dollars or you can go to social media and get tickets as well at our facebook yeah. event page absolutely so anyways that's uh, february 9th did we get february 9th we didn't we just we assumed did. everyone knew february, february 9th, 9th yeah. right so all right so which means by the way we will not be here february 9th all right last thing is we did a little visit as you may know we do these jag tag segments johnny and monica travel around pittsburgh with us and we go see small businesses that we love when they started in a garage. We love that sort of organic yeah. story. Well, we met a great one that literally started in a garage, and you can see them every month on Heather with Heather Abraham on Talk Pittsburgh. But uh, the full video is on you, Jag off right now, and it's Thread Masters. We had such a good time because what happened was we'd been in Westmoreland County, and somebody else from a small business, which was Keystone. Uh, where I keep saying yeah. that wrong. Keystone, Keystone Steel. Steel. They tagged a Jag, and that Jag was Threadmasters. Mm -hmm. We went and we bought stuff. We are not kidding you. It's it's a sickness. <laughs> she had such great embroidery that we did come home with some Jag paraphernalia, and we're super stoked for that. Yeah. Anyway, we're also super stoked for tonight because we have some great guests coming up. We're going to sit and chat it up, and the best part is... Our 4 one to dos that we deliver every single Friday, well, they're live and in studio with Discover the Bird, so we're mm -hmm. really excited for that. But first, we're going to get to talk to a dear old friend of mine who is one of the best writers in the city. Mm -hmm. and who is a news writer, but now became an, a book writer, well, an author. What a writer, crazy feature, transition, yeah, right? Exactly. What a crazy transition yeah. to make, and it's not going to be, I'm sure it wasn't easy to do that. Yeah. Also, where you have our kind of in our own friendly sommelier here. The is right she Kaka, ours? Have the Indian song on that? Instagram, yeah. and she tells us all about wine. And as a matter of fact, she's bringing some wine. Yeah, See, and I understand. another reason why you should be here versus watching this. Exactly, and I understand that we are actually going to play the Kenny Pickett game 
with her wine. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was so surprised because I thought we were just doing that with food, and then you surprised me. You're like, "No, Rachel, the Kenny Pickett hey. game can be for wine it as can well." Flex so into a wine. Stoked. And all that means is our musician gets to enjoy wine, and That's our musician right. is actually one of our faves. You know him because he's been on this podcast, on this show multiple times. Brandon Payne. He uh, he's just a great folk kind of. I don't know. How else do you describe him? I should have asked him that. He finally gets I to come him. inside with us. There you go. Right? He's always acoustic and outside. Tonight, yeah. it's still raining, and he's used to that, but he's inside with us, and we're really excited. We have quite the show for you. Stay with us on your Jag Off Late Night. Rach, I have to vent. Here's my dryer vent. This one time, I had a, found a Lee Press-On nail in my dryer stuff, and mm. it was not mine. Vom in the throat, vom in the throat. Ugh. One time, my kids left Kleenexes mm. from one of their worst whooping coughs in their pocket. Guys, 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 you guys are such Jag Offs. That's not the type of dryer venting we're talking about. We professionally clean your dry event to increase your dry time and save you guys some money. For so four hours. Wet, like 10 pounds you wet. You jag off, you need to get your dry events clean. Mancini's Bakery, 97 years in business and still getting better. Make sure you follow us on Facebook and Instagram. That's where you will see various Pittsburgh personalities like Gretchen McKay, Super Bowl MVP, Santonio Holmes, KDKA's own Mary Hours, and WPXI's Jenna Harner, learning how to make the famous Italian twist bread. Follow Mancini Bakery on Instagram and Facebook, and remember to ask for Mancini's. Welcome to Flamini. Can I take your order? You need a tap it? No, we don't use this. We, we know how to yell the sandwich to the, the cook. Here we go. Let's dig in. It's John and Rachel. We love to dig into iconic Pittsburgh places like Permanis. So we brought our friends from People's Gas. Please call at least three business days before you dig. It doesn't matter if it's a big project or something small like a mailbox. Always call before you dig. I called. We can dig in. So please call 811 three business days before excavating so you don't have to call 911. Nothing extra. Flour and water in the bowl. That's it. And a little bit salt. So the salt is important. It's not for taste, it's more for the gluten. What is the difference between we think phyllo dough? Yeah. Most of us think Greek. The dough doesn't recognize borders. So the whole region has similar food culture and things that have come through history and through time. Borders might be more recent and have moved around. So there's a lot of influence from all over, even through the Middle East and, and up into even Western Europe. We have customers from all over Europe who recognize some of the, the sweet yeast dough pastries. John and Rachel, you jag off late night, and we are so excited that we get to talk to somebody about a book. Sorry, am I? No. <laughs> You're looking at me. We're coming out of G Jet, from what I understand, and G Jet was all about Jack's Bakery. And I've heard so many people talk about Jack's Bakery. I've not been there. It's one of those Pittsburgh. How have I not been there before? I agree. Have I you? Agree. No, I, no. We never. need to get there because G Jet is something that we visit local people to find out amazing recipes and and cool things to eat and we have our own right right thanks to dryer vent wizard we appreciate that all right sending paying the money to fly <laughs> tris all around the world including to go to jack's all right to give us a little introduction here rach oh this i'm is so sorry book. is that why you were sitting there with the book out yes <laughs> i thought i had to talk more about gjet i apologize my dear friend joey and harrop has written a book i the first question i want to ask and i know that i have to describe this a little more but she's been a writer connoisseur writer for uh, two decades plus she's now written a book about her and living with her mom it's called a daughter's promise it's been around for about what two months now and i've seen you talk various platforms go to different places for the book and i love that pittsburgh is embracing this so welcome i love Thank the fact you. that we finally get you on we've asked joanne multiple times will you come on because you're mm -hmm. one of my favorite writers mm -hmm. she's like no thanks finally she writes the book and we get to talk to her but a daughter's promise is like everyone's talking about this joanne well thank you i appreciate that i was i was a little nervous that's why i haven't been on but i know but i feel comfortable now oh thank god uh, that's yeah. why we do a happy hour <laughs> is it We're because of the stupid. wine that konica brought our <laughs> no. next guest no I, no i don't think so um, <laughs> so t my big question is is that you were a writer for a news outlet and now you're an author a writer of a book 
What kind of transition is that? Like writing short pieces and just tell me how you made that transition. Process, or was it yeah. just simply because you were doing it? It was uh, a passion project. Okay, I can tell you. I still do write for uh, Trib Live. I've been sure. there 26 years. Mm -hmm. And I had written this story about my mother. I had quarantined with her in her nursing home for 85 days during the pandemic. And the story did really well. And it won an, a National Edward Morrow Award. Yes. Wow. And so yeah. the Trib gave me some time off to work on a book. So I just concentrated on that for six months. And so I wasn't doing both my regular newspaper duties okay. as well as writing the book. And it was it, it was um, a labor of love. Sure. I'm sure. So, I, I you know, obviously this is a um, it tugs at your heartstrings. Right. Because I've had the luxury and the honor of meeting mm -hmm. your mom. Thank you. And she was just a lovely individual. And you spent such good time with her even before, you know, the pandemic or her illness. You were always a good daughter, always, you. you know, there to kind of be with her no matter what, no yeah. matter the good times, the bad. And so what was it like when everyone is sort of going into this pandemic not knowing what to expect and we're we're hearing that we can't live with people that you know outside of the the our walls and you've made this decision to kind of do that what was that like and did it change your opinion on your relationship with your mom well it was it was scary obviously but i was not going to leave her i yeah. had visited her every day for four years prior to the pandemic and the nursing home um actually asked me if i wanted they said i could stay but i couldn't leave if i stayed and so we thought it was going to be two weeks, just like everything else. Right, and, um, right. It ended up being 85 days. And I lived with her in her 250 square foot room for those 85 days. And I would do it all over again because she was my best friend. Uh, and yeah. tell me a little bit about the insight it gave you just as far as that level of care, personal care in, in the United States, or at least in this area, right? Sure. It's I think nursing homes get a bad rap a lot. And um this one was Charles Morris, and it was located in Squirrel Hill, and it was a really good nursing home. The people that worked there really cared about the residents. And I think when I think back on it, the, the pandemic was tough, but isolation is toughest for these mm. senior citizens. You know, not getting to be able to see their family members and things like that. So um, I learned a lot about the inner workings, too. And um you know, I think I could I could work there because now I know sort of I knew where everything was. I knew where to get um, where to do the laundry. I knew sure. where to get new, clean sheets and things like that. I had my own bed there. So um, I, I think that that people need to spend more time in nursing homes and don't be afraid of them. That's in a the, good point. Yeah. yeah. I the mean, kind of, I'm sure you cover it in A Daughter's Promise, your yes. book, but the kind of conversations that you had with your mom, were they more in depth than you had ever done before? You know, because you saw her every day for four years. Right. But the fact is now you were literally there 24 hours a day. Well, it was. And also because she was kind of confused about what was happening in the world, too. Mm. So we talked about that. We talked about her family. We talked about... Um, my siblings we talked about my dad so yeah you're right like we had a lot of really good in-depth conversations and there really wasn't a lot on TV because there wasn't a lot of new stuff on right. I mean we watched the Golden Girls all the time because that was her favorite show <laughs> How could you not yeah. It's a, yeah it's an amazing show but but yeah we talked about things that we probably would have never talked about if I didn't stay there with her Wow. what's something that you learned you know like John said having been with her as much as you were and again I can attest to it because you would go to events with her you would make sure, sure that in between stories you were visiting her she was such an integral part of your life yes. and so what was the biggest thing for you once you were there for a couple of days a month that you were like, oh, I didn't know this part of my mom? Did you discover something that maybe you d weren't expecting? Um, I d <laughs> you know what? I discovered that she she really knew how to take things in life. You know, whatever was thrown at her, she dealt with. Mm -hmm. okay, Just like wow. that. Yeah. Did you notice any similarities between the two of you? Did you say, wow, I'm more like her in this way? Um. Well, <laughs> food was kind of an issue because she was she would pretty much eat anything and I was very particular. So <laughs> so I learned a lot of the differences that we had about food. But um, we had people from the outside bringing us food in. So that helped oh, a that lot. That was good. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was good for sure. Now, yeah. during this time, I would take the lighter side, if you don't mind. Sure. And during this time, you know, as, as adults, some we've been at parties before where adults say, oh, I told my mom and dad everything once I was in my 30s. Right. You know, I came clean. I told them about the parties <laughs> we had and all that. Yeah. Me, I never did that. Like, well, <laughs> now, did you come clean on anything when you were? Was it confession time, Joanne?
Oh, Mom, you remember that one time you saw me? <laughs> I wasn't sneaking out of my room at all. <laughs> no, as a matter of fact, I didn't. But you know what? Now that I think there was probably a couple of things I could have told her. But, um, you know, she, she pretty much knew a lot. I, yeah. I shared okay. everything with her generally. Yeah. So, What was your sibling's reaction? I know that that has right. to be. I know you have siblings. And yes. I know that, you know, you every sibling has a different relationship with their parents. Right. What was their sort of feedback or how did they feel or what were they conveying to you while you were there? Well, they totally appreciated what I'm I was sure. doing. And um, they've read the book since it's come out. And my one sister said, now I really know what you went through mm. staying there. So, mm. um, you know, and they, and they would text me and call me. So we did have sort of some open conversations while we were there. But they all live out of, outside of Pittsburgh. Mm. So they were happy that I could sure. be there with her. Yeah. yeah. And what was their like, sort of, what was your take then with them? What was the takeaway afterward? Like, did you guys talk about it? Just the, the experience of your mom or maybe you learning something new about her and how, like you said, her resilience, her ability to take anything on. Yeah, because we, um, I, we try to do like because we can't be physically in the same place sure. you know we'll do zoom calls and things like that and yeah we'll reminisce about both of our parents and they'll ask me things about what happened there and so that makes me feel good you yeah. know so, yeah. yeah does it put you back in that place where oh, i'm yes. sure yeah. yeah which is not always easy i'm sure same yeah. with writing the book and going going through it all yeah. in detail all sure. right so talk about the process of writing a book yeah this is the first time you ever wrote a book, yes. or had you tried before? I, I had. Okay. I had not tried before. This is the first time. How and, different is it? Um, totally different. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I worked with an editor, um, Susan McFarland. She had been with the Tribune for for a long time. She recently retired. And what we did is we started out with an outline, which was a pretty good, was a pretty good idea. Uh, that was her idea. And she also had me list the top 100 things in my life. And, and if you do that, you think, oh, my God, I don't have 100 things. But you start doing it and you come up with uh, so many different things. Like experiences? And experiences or, okay. or things that happened or just 100, 100 highlights of my life. Wow. And some of those are actually ended up in the book. Hmm. Um, and the biggest thing is you have to, even with writing for the newspaper, sometimes the editor will try to cut something or say we don't need it or we should do it this this way so that's kind of challenging and then because it was so emotional i had to walk away several times because sure. mm. I, and even she agreed to that she's like take a week off like walk away from the book mm -hmm. and um so i i think that you know from writing newspapers to writing books it's just so much more in depth and you have to you have to have patience lots yeah. of patience so do you come out with a list of recommendations could you be the person that i might call if uh, my parents needed to go into a personal care like oh, oh here gosh. are the top that's a great question 10 things like you sure. learn from the inside yeah sure i could definitely be that person that may be the next book is that you know? right yeah. <laughs> there you go <laughs> look at you listen you better <laughs> give john credit for that Joanne. <laughs> a jagoff's guide to being in on the inside <laughs> yeah. no but it you is true it. you uh, know people the most raw and um, relatable material is from someone who's truly just telling it like it is. And right. you're telling the story exactly as you know it. Right. Well, that's what one of my colleagues said. He's like, as newspaper reporters, we try to get this, do these in-depth stories. And we try to, like, research all this stuff and because we think it's going to win an award. He said, that came from your heart. That's yeah. why it won an award. Yeah, so. that's so true. Yes. Oh, my God. I couldn't be more proud. Where Thank can you. everybody find out more about the book? Can they go to the trip? Do they go to yeah, your there, site? It, there is, um, yes, there is an ad on the, uh, triblive.com. They also can go to bookbaby.com and order it there. Uh, and uh, maybe I can send you guys the link and you can yes, put it up. Yes, please do. Yeah. Okay. Is it an easy read for someone who maybe isn't an all-the-time reader? Or is this is this like a weekend binge? Well, a lot of people that have read it said that they couldn't put it down. Uh, and, and they've read it in the same night. But... I need to send a box of Kleenex with it. Yeah, so, well, clearly. Oh, yeah, <laughs> clearly. Yeah, yeah I, I can feel it already. Uh, well, Joanne Hare, thank you so much. A Daughter's Promise is the name of the book. And uh, people can still read your writing, though, in the trip, right? Yes, they can. Where can they yes. find you on social media? <laughs> they can find me on Twitter. Well, I guess X, formerly yes. Twitter, <laughs> at Joanne Scoop. I oh, love that. I love that. <laughs> yeah, right? That's a good one. All right, so you know we have two questions of the day to choose from, John. Have you have you looked? No, you do it. Oh my God, I hate when you do this. All right, 
What is your go-to cold weather comfort food? Here we are in the in the depths of the cold. Finally, what do you go to? Uh, hot chocolate. Really? Yes. Oh. That's okay. One of Any my food along with it or no? Uh, no, hot chocolate is good. Marshmallows really? or no? Yes. yes. Mini. Mini. I don't Mini? like this connection oh. one bit. <laughs> I've known her much longer than you. Now we have a junk drawer thing going on here. Did yes. you bring us something for? I, 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 I love the fact that listen. When we see you, no know, whether it's a press conference and a motorcycle thing, <laughs> or or at the at the Byam Theater, you're always dressed so so. Oh, swanky, right? Yeah. And here you are giving us a junk drawer item in a very swanky bag. Well, and yeah, you can pick whatever you want. Oh my god! Oh okay, my this god! Is okay, here and I'll hold it, is, it for let's you. Let's describe it. It's in a very beautiful <laughs> silver and gold bag. Okay, yeah. so what did you get? Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! It's the fiftieth wedding anniversary to her parents' party. Oh, that right. is, <laughs> and it was May. Tw- I missed it. May twenty third of nineteen ninety nine. How old were you? Bummer. Make us all angry. How old no, were you? She's not that much older than uh, me. No. Yeah. I graduated right. oh. in ninety four. And I got a bally shoehorn. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that is hysterical. <laughs> That John, is, awesome. is there other? Listen, there's also. Wait, you're only gonna pick one. No, I'm taking. I'm oh. throw a, a Christmas ornament, a blue ball. That's you a see, Christmas it matches ornament. The yeah, yeah, I yeah. had no doubt that it would. And okay, so is what this is like that? It's a toss cap. Oh, it's definitely it's, uh, I had from you. Yeah, but it doesn't fit my head anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was gonna say I don't think it would Should fit my head. Should we keep going? Either. Yeah, I think you have to all because right, it doesn't right. get any better than. Wait, this. wait. Here's oh a pin. <laughs> A Santa pin. pin. All right. oh, wait, I really here, like that. This way. All right, cool. These are great. Okay, Keep wait. Going. Is this a ruler? Jesus, we have a whole oh, junk wait, cargo bin. Hey, it's not just a ruler. It is a trip live. <laughs> there you go. It's a ruler, ruler and calculator. calculator in one. You can yeah. put it at your desk. Oh, what is that? Oh my God. This is a old screwdriver that I'm seriously. We had one of these when I grew up in my in like my in mom's. Yeah, that was junk my drawer. dad's. Yeah, in my mom's oh, junk drawer. Yeah, Joanne. yeah. It's probably about a hundred years. Joanne, this old. is. I, like that <laughs> <we cannot accept. laughs> I, I recognize this thing. I feel like that oh we cannot God, accept, so John. Crazy. Everything else we are taking. <laughs> right. We will not regift. We promise, but we absolutely love it, Joanne. <laughs> I'm so glad that you finally came on again. It's been a pleasure <laughs> to know you. you. I love your writing. I love what you do for our city, and this book is truly a gift back as well. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, thank you. So we will put the link up so that people know where they can get the book and again where does everybody follow you uh, at joanne scoop nice <laughs> nice and we are going to be talking wine next with indian psalm konica you jag off late night i've been thinking that roric automotive needs a new jingle Rory got automotive got the best cars around pittsburgh driving a roric i bought it at roric Picked up my new car at Rorick Automotive. I got friends at Rorick Automotive where the staff is nice and the dealership's loaded with brand new cars. And you can drive real far. If my younger self could see me doing these things now, I wouldn't believe it. To be a steam fitter, you need to be a problem solver. You can do instrumentation, hydronics, chillers, rigging, HVAC. I have this wonderful opportunity to grow my career. It's not what you are that makes you a steam fitter. It's who you are. Over a hundred years and we're just getting started. We are really upping our nose upping our game we're here right our nose. because you know like we have our yes, noses in the air because up, and yeah. our pinkies in the air because we are about to talk about wine with a very accomplished wine person who became a wine person right in front of our eyes since we first knew you so Konica welcome to Yinjag of Late Night Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. Konica, you bring the rain. The last time we were with you, we sat in a rainstorm. Yes. Outside oh, in right. what, Mercer County or something yeah. like that. Mm-hmm. And we had the greatest conversation. I'm not just saying this. Like We were having such a good conversation about how you've been known for that curry smell. You've been so into the food scene here in Pittsburgh. And that you were sort of transitioning into learning more about wine. Yes. And it was so interesting. And then all of a sudden, it's pouring. And we were like, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> so here it is pouring again tonight. And... I, I just think that you're behind it. But as long as you are filling our glasses with wine, we are completely fine with that. 
<laughs> I'm fine with that too. And I don't think you're the only person who thinks this way. Oh, okay, I, I feel this way too. And I've definitely faced it a lot in some of my recent wine travels. Oh, okay. Yeah. Places we visited recently. Um, and actually, that's a good segue to talk about what we have in front of us. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I tried. I was trying to bring <laughs> the rain. Give you the layup there, right? Well, bringing the rain. So um, um, I actually have here a bottle of Priorat. It's a Spanish wine. Uh, Priorat is a place, is a designated region, which is about two and a half hours south of Barcelona. And it is perpetually in drought and when oh. we were there it was the first time it had like rained in a little Stop bit it. <laughs> of course oh, that's oh, that's so, amazing. Amazing. so we funny. were there and like oh you bring the rain i said yes i did bring the rain but it hadn't <laughs> really it had like maybe rained out there 15 liters in the last two years oh. so it's oh a pretty my gosh. it's perpetually in drought but i bought you both uh, some wine from there this is a blend of Carignan and Garnacha, which is Grenache. Show this label now, again here. Priorat is just such a fascinating place. It's kind of, when you go there, it's kind of walking back in time. Okay. And really walking back in time because all of their vineyards, every practice, every single thing is still done by hand, by mules, because the area is very, very remote. It's very rural. It's very rustic. And it's just very steeped in tradition, but they're doing such marvelous work. It's a very small area, and they're producing very little wine, but they are producing like phenomenal wine. So this is from one of the vineyards that is out there, and it's uh, Alvaro Palacios, who is one of the pioneers of Priorat. So I want you to taste the wine and see what you think. Okay, so before I yeah. take my sip real quick. So do you research these places before you visit? Or you, so you sort of knew enough about the climate, the environment, what to expect, that kind of thing? Yes. Okay. So not, of course, I mean, once you go there, you see so much and you learn so much. But Priorat was definitely one of the first things I wanted to go when we visited Spain. We did a whole Spain tour, and that was one of the places. And it's just one of these very enigmatic, very mysterious place that I wanted okay. to visit out there. Salute. Yeah. Salute. Down the hatch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't touch it. So wait, let's go through the process. I was if being I'm hoity. tasting this, yeah. I'm sniffing it, yeah. I'm yes. swirling it. So Tell me a little bit about the it. The first thing, you want to oh, hold yeah. it out here so that you don't warm up your glass oh, a little too much. Oh, that's why it has a stem. Yeah. Also, if you're like me and like wearing perfumes and nice scented moisturizers, you, you will keep that scent away from you. Uh, okay. If you're dirty like Rachel, wine. you just cup it. Like <laughs> <laughs> if you feel more comfortable walking it, it's that's fine too. Then you kind of swirl it, and you don't okay. need to do the whole swirling in the air. You can just put it down on the swirl table. Swirl it real good. <laughs> <laughs> you can just put it down on the table and do this okay. too. I oh, see. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So I mean, okay. hoping that in this way John doesn't pour his whole wine to right. Rachel. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Believe me, somewhere along the way, this is going on my shirt. I just know it. <laughs> then you want to smell it. I feel like Rachel's already skipped a sad yeah. step, so that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like she's not listening already. <laughs> And you want to smell, smell it, it. I swear, I swear. and smell some more, and then you taste it, and tell me what you think. I really love this wine. I love it, and oh, I'm not a huge wow. wino. Yeah, it is really good. And you know, wino. I'm not. <laughs> but listen, you. We have to give a shout out to Konica. She had you, Monica, and I attend a cheese and wine pairing back in the summer, if you recall. Yeah, up in we're, Mars. Uh, what was yes, it? Yes, in Mars. So I, I do. The name. I do it every month, and we're trying to do it more. And okay. it's a. It's almost been a year now, so we do these wine and cheese classes. Yes. There are like six different wines, there are 18 different cheeses, and it's in Mars with my wonderful business partner, Nosh and Kurt, Nosh who and Kurt, has right. the most amazing selection of cheeses anywhere in Pittsburgh. Really, I'm not just saying and that. I, and I'm not being funny. We're very good friends with the Cheese Queen, and mm -hmm. I brought it up to her. Oh, she's so Loves fun. her. She I loves know. her. She said, we really right. exchange mm -hmm. stories. And I love that so much. Me Out too. Here, I love Cheese Queen as well. I love Nosh and Kurt. Danielle is her name. Yes. And they both love each other. Yeah. And I love working in this beautiful supportive community. So what Danielle and I do is we do wine and cheese nights and we do classes. It's like a pairing and a tasting session. So we do the, I do the wine and she does the cheeses and we obviously like get together and do and figure out what will go what with what. Mm -hmm. And we have Amy Knight, are you months. listening? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. She has a little place that we might have to just think about because right. those are what people are looking mm -hmm. for is yeah. what do you pair with? The common person doesn't Absolutely. always know yeah. what, what tastes best with. So 
I hearken back to when you were explaining mm -hmm. these things to us. And one of the things I remember was you loved Spanish wine. What is it about that particular, this particular style? Oh, Spanish wines. And it's so hard to pinpoint. I just feel like I really like all of the different aspects of it from different places. It's so, there's a lot of diversity in Spanish wines. So, and I like them from all of the areas of Spain. They're kind of rustic, they're very known to be very bold and they are not shy about themselves. Mm -hmm. So I like the wine. I think it's really it's cool. It's very good. Yeah. Just remind everybody who listening on the radio or on the podcast, only part, audio part, it's Konica, the Indian Psalm, who always is still the uh, that curry smell on yes. Instagram as well. But Indian Psalm is your transition. And we love this fact that you brought us wine. You know, when we were with you the last time, we talked about port wine, and it took me oh, yeah. about 72 days to remember it was port wine. <laughs> Literally, out of we the blue. We went through every oh. word, and one day we were <laughs> riding down the oh road, and I yelled, Port. Yeah, and, I remember uh, that because that's how you <laughs> messaged me too. Like, port. I said, yes. Yes. Right. yes. And it's and, sad uh, that you knew. And yeah. I actually had to go get a bottle of it for the holidays because I thought it is really good. This actually kind of reminds me like it's for, port is fortified yeah. with brandy, but this kind of reminds me of that. So this is not fortified at all, but, okay. but the, the, aromas that you're getting in there mm -hmm. yeah very fruity like kind of like almost like red raspberries some like cherries so kind of very similar to what you would get with the ruby port so that's why you get the similarities in this okay yeah. now this is so kind good. of it's now we did introduce you i was kidding around that our noses were in the air our pinkies were in the air but your whole idea is to make wine drinking not pretentious absolutely you're so right my whole idea and everything i do with my business i do a lot of uh private online virtual tastings as well as well as in-person tastings and i also do a lot of blogging and on my instagram as well and everything my philosophy is to make wine more approachable more diverse and more inclusive i don't want wine to be pretentious and i feel right. like wine is shrouded in mystery so much and i just want to change that narrative mm -hmm. just make it more approachable now are you of indian i'm sorry rach you're indian I hate this descent part. is there talking, a certain man. kind of wine I'm that's jumping. in uh, that's indigenous to india that's different than spanish and italian wines uh there are grape varietals being discovered every every day i feel like india is going through a very new introduction into wine because wine typically was not really a Indian beverage, okay. but there are now wonderful producers that are actually putting in grape varieties from different places in Europe, in India, and seeing what's working and what's not. So a lot of that is happening. Okay. And yeah. when you say you are working toward not, you know, making it the, you know, uppity kind of mm -hmm. drink of choice, how do you do that? What is the process? Like, how right. do we have people understand, like, it doesn't have to cost $150, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. And that's, yeah, and that's where, like, I know people turn their noses up on, like, uh, wine with a with not a corkscrew in it, with a screw top in it, and or wine below a certain price. And no, you can find great wines at basically every price. It depends on what exactly, what's gone into the wine, how it's been made, what what place is from, and all of these things. Sure. So that, as well as also pairing it, because I feel like wine paired with food is such a wonderful thing. Yeah. And I try and make it so that it's paired with things that are more approachable. For instance, if you want to have a... Something from the freezer section at Trader Joe's, like an orange chicken, and you still want to have a nice glass of wine with it because even if you're by yourself and you want a nice glass of wine with a freezer meal, I want you to be able to do that. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Because mm -hmm. we do. I know. Because you don't know what your day brings, right? right? Like you may be coming home and you're like, it's raining, it's crappy, I want to sit at home, yes. but I want a glass of wine, I want to be in my right. PJs. But then there's times you want to go out and look nice and drink right. your wine. Yeah. Absolutely. Not everybody is having a California red and steak at the end of the night. Exactly. And as a matter of fact, you're using the vacuum stop on your bottle of wine how long can someone if someone lives alone you know no names ever here but uh <laughs> asking but, for <laughs> yeah. if and how long can a bottle of wine last with the vacuum can, well it depends week? on the kind of wine now if it's a sparkling wine i'd say just drink it okay um or get a half bottle you can get a half bottle with red wines it depends on the kind of red wine too but i would say a good indication is two to three days. White wines, one to two days. You can keep it a little longer than that, but it does uh, lose a little bit of its oomph. But I would say easily two to three days, just okay. if you vacuum it really well and put it in the fridge. Once you open your wine, put it in the fridge. Don't look at me this sideways because I drank it nine days later. Regularly. Don't They're look like, at me sideways. It was nine <laughs> days later I drank it. It's, I, right. Yeah. I know you yeah. have. It is amazing because we've been able to kind of watch your journey and see where you are. And 
you've learned so much. But what I love about it is you're not just learning, but you're sharing what you've learned with us peons who have no idea, who are right. like, no. I'm still buying box wine. And you're like, oh, that's great, Rachel. <laughs> I'm not judging you. On your and box I'm not wine. judging you. There are some really nice box wines out there. But I just, I mean, I started this way too. I had no clue about wine. Sure. I didn't grow up with a uh, with a wine cellar. I came yeah. from a very model, modest middle class Indian family, and I had no access to wine. I started drinking like one of the cheapest Concord grape wines out here, and then I like just moved my journey. Like, hey, I'll try this and I'll try that, and then I wanted to study further to actually enhance my knowledge so that yeah. I could f figure out what I was talking about. I and in that. I found everything that I didn't know and sure. everything that I still wanted to know and I wanted yeah. to share that and knowledge. And you love cheese too? I love oh cheese. Oh my God, me too. Mm. Oh my God. It's just, I mean, God, it gums up the works, but who yeah. cares? We the have stinkier to have the better. better. <laughs> All right, are you coming back every week or just every other week I will week come back every week. All right, in. All right, our question of the day yes. is? Go to comfort food and don't say hot chocolate. It has to be a food. Oh my God, go to comfort food. All right, it's got to be Jeez. this Indian dish called Rajma Chawal. Oh. Rajma is a red bean dish and it's like slow cooked in a gravy and it's got wonderful warming spices and chawal just means rice. So it's steamed rice with this beautiful red bean dish, which I and absolutely love. it sounds very love. simple, right? It's very simple. Yeah. And I have it on my website too, how to pair Rajma Chawal with yes. a Cabernet actually. Right. <laughs> but I love Monica, it. Monica, g -chat. Get yeah. her with a G jet. Yeah. Yes, we need to Monica get Monica and, and Monica. Monica. And yes, rice the other day on a text, as a matter of fact, beans and rice. But beans Monica and rice. will visit you and find out how to make that because that's a great recipe. I idea. would love to share that recipe. All right. All right. So speaking of sharing, do yes. you have something for our junk drawer? Ooh, as a matter of fact, I, I do. love this. I love this. I this do. is like my favorite part of the day. All right, I, I have this. All right, it's a wine cork. It is actually a port cork. Oh, yeah, oh, for you. Port, oh, <laughs> Everything is for John. <laughs> I just quit. I need a guest. Somebody emerge who is like, oh, Rachel likes insert something. Rachel, you got to give me your favorite cookies and I'm going to bring them to you next time. No. Yes. yes. Come on. <laughs> All right. No. Guacamole. You're the sweetest thing. Guacamole. I do Guacamole. love it. I know Guacamole Amy knows tonight. the way to my okay. heart. Okay. That is the way to Rachel's No, heart. Kanaki, you are a joy. I'm so, I love that we've gotten to know you over the years and we wish you nothing but the best because what you're doing for our city is truly, truly remarkable because us Yinzers, we need a little more education about this stuff. So we appreciate I'm a Yinzer. Too, and I you feel like are. we should we should all like get educated together there and get, leave the pretentiousness away. We love right. it. Where can everybody find you and follow you? Well, you can find me on the IndianSum.com and also on Instagram and also on that curry smell on Instagram. Love it. We it's talked a, a little where you at, yeah, and yeah, we yeah. please make sure you go to our website so you could see our where you at in its full entirety. Tressa took us to a great place <laughs> for our tea chat, and uh, Marcus took us to a great place for our people where you used at. to so celebrate thank you so much. Work, and next up, the spirit of the underdog. You don't hear too much about those things anymore. The world needs more problem solvers, people who know results matter, folks with brains and elbow grease. Our work runs through just about every office building in the city like a network of veins. It's not what you are that makes you a steam fitter. It's who you are. PittsburghUsedCars.com with hundreds of used cars across eight dealerships throughout the city. We provide the greater Pittsburgh area with a premium used car buying experience. Looking for unbeatable pricing on some of the best used cars in Pittsburgh? Visit Pittsburgh Used Cars Clearance Zone today. We're providing out-the-door pricing on all of our clearance zone inventory. PittsburghUsedCars.com Hey everybody, it's your boy comedian Marcus Cox. We are in Ambridge, PA at Survival Ready. Today I'm with Russ. So obviously this exceeds just your regular camping. Yes. So why would it be important to have those sort of skills? Well, it's good to be reliable on yourself. Right. Being your own independent person, doing things that you can do on your own, not rely on okay. anything else. And, you know, floods, natural disasters and whatnot, we're trying to provide a one-stop shop mm -hmm. for all of your needs for, you know, going out in the woods, camping, but more than that, 
right. being able to sit at home, make sure that your home's secure, your family's secure, and you have all the things that you need to thrive in a disaster okay. situation. At People's Natural Gas, we provide clean, safe, reliable natural gas. We're always looking to get cleaner as we continue to protect our environment. And that's also why we support organizations like the National Aviary that are focused around the clock on conservation. Let's hear from them about some of their efforts. A lot of people know about the National Aviary, but not a lot of people know all the conservation work that the National Aviary does. We are part of a lot of conservation work out in the field, and we do things here at the National Aviary. Staff members like myself are part of a lot of different projects. To learn more about the conservation work that the National Aviary does, you can check out our website, aviary.org. We're also always working to make our environment cleaner through our work. That's why we've reduced emissions since 2019 by 17% over 2019 figures. John and Rachel, you jack up late night, and we are in the kitchen part, which means we're in the musician part. Why does the musician get to play in the kitchen? I don't know. I don't know. It's just the way we set it up. Right. And it's right. some musicians are our favorite people, like Brandon Payne. Did you like that little segue? That was wonderful. You I really think. are one of our faves. And you came to us. Listen, this is the story of Brandon Payne. He literally came on a porch tour, and we had so much fun in the rain. In and the rain. then you came on another porch tour, but it wasn't raining. And now here you are, rain again. So we can't blame you like we blame Konica All right. for bringing the rain. But you do bring really good music, so that's why we want you back time and time again. Thank you. And this is Absolutely. really your first time inside with yeah. us, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's nice to see you without the sun kind of exactly. or yeah. rain. Yeah. Right. No there elements to worry about. There you go. The pain rain. Tracy was talking <laughs> about how we we were just discovering that you are a teacher by trade, but you also are everywhere I look, you're performing. How has it been for you? Um, busy. Yeah. I actually had to like knock it down a little bit because okay. I, it was twice, three times a weekend. So wow. Um, is that um, a Commodore is song? Is that a thrice? That's Do we a say Commodore thrice? Song. thrice? Once, thrice, twice, weeks. three okay. times a weekend. Um, it's, it's great. Once. I love I love all the places that I play. Uh, they're all very nice people. Um, yeah. But it just we didn't have time to go. Uh, to the football game or go do something else. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we. What are some of the common places where where can people typically find you performing? Um, I'm playing at Helltown in the Strip. Oh, okay. Pretty much every month, um, <clears throat> starting in March. Uh, so you can catch me there. Uh, a lot in the South Hill, uh, South Hills like Monongahela, further south, the South South Hills. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, Monongahela that area. Um, so yeah, around that. So talk about, like, this is the first time you've been on this version of the podcast, so we almost have to kind of start back at zero again as okay. far as, you know, just talk about your writing routines and how often you like to pump out a song. Is it, it do you go in spurts like, oh, three months, I got nine songs, I'm going to take a break? Do you go every month, I make sure I write a song, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent? Oh, gosh, I think that that folds into the to the last question of uh, I was so busy playing that I just didn't have time to write. So. Oh, OK. okay. But I've been so it covers it is. <laughs> mm, so it's been a lot of covers uh, working on originals when I have time to working on the, the little home studio to. Uh, OK, to uh, do that. But yeah, I, I'm I have a lot of songs that I play out. I never recorded. So um, I'm looking forward to get those recorded and uh, distribute them as soon as I'm able to do that. Okay, so. and you're one of those folks that you do more single acoustic. You're not really bandy, right? By I choice, did, any reason for that? Um, I did bands for since I was 16. And, yeah. And now I'm too old to remember. Um, <laughs> so, so, so I, uh, yeah, I did that. And then it was just like, it, it's kind of fun to be on my own schedule. I don't worry about anyone else's schedule. I don't have to worry about what anyone, what anyone else wants to play. I do what I right. want to do, and I'm an only child, so like it makes sense, right? You <laughs> threw a tantrum, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but can you do that tonight before your song? Can you what, throw, throw a, tantrum a tantrum on the floor? Maybe? Oh, you don't even want to see. Is that right? Is that <laughs> you right? don't even you don't want to know. So now, given the fact that you are on your own, do you find other people to co-write with? You know, just kind of like, hey, what are you listening to? You know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, and, and, and a lot of that, not necessarily co-writing, but like getting uh, people come up and say, hey, do you know this song? And I'm like, I don't know who that is at all. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Who's, who's this? And um, yeah, and that, that's some of the best music that I play because they hear what I do and then they're like, you sound like this person. You sound like that song. So yeah. that's kind of gives me some stuff that I don't, I don't really listen to the radio. 
Okay. And for context, who who do they compare you to? What is the sound that you typically get sort oh, of compared? Oh, gosh. Um, I've had somebody tell me that I sound like Matchbox 20. Mm, um, yeah. I get a lot of uh, comparisons. Do you know Tower Childers? Do you know uh, Zach Bryan? Do you know, like... And, and Zach like, Bryan, huh? Yeah. I never thought that. No, just country, just, I, I'm yeah. just like that. Like I don't know. Now that I'm more folky, acoustic, yeah, and I'm I'm too slow. My wife tells me all the time. She's like, you gotta learn faster songs. So <laughs> Is that how she talks? <laughs> that how she talks? <laughs> well, she she's from the she's, she's from, from she's yeah. from Pittsburgh. I ain't from Pittsburgh now. So <laughs> now when you go to family functions, they hey, did you bring the guitar? And you're like, no, no, I left that at home. I'm just here to eat some macaroni. Salad. Yeah, I'm 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 here for the food. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's exactly right. Yeah, yeah. 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 Guitar stays home. And what is it like to balance something that you love, like playing music as well as teaching? Is it is it the best of both worlds? Um, I, I think it's I think it's great, and I wish that I had a guitar in my classroom to keep in there because sure. I taught elementary school for fifteen years, yeah, and that, that I always had like something there to the, bring the music in for the little kids. But I think the the high school kids would like it too. I mean, oh for well, sure, I mean, they must think oh. it's cool or yeah. dope, whatever they say these yeah. days. <laughs> Bars. What, yeah, he started saying dope today. I don't know <laughs> where it came from, but dope is the word. Flare. Is it flare? Uh, it, w- it was fleek for a long fleek. time, and now it's fire. Fire. Oh, that oh, guitar fire. is fire. I said but it the I mean, other I'd day in front of my kids. If, if you were like, a student in school, you were playing, out, playing live music, they'd think like, oh, he's awesome. Let's listen to yeah, whatever he's going to teach yeah. us. Guess my yeah, age. Right. When I was in <laughs> seventh grade, this is why I'm telling you this. I was in seventh grade, and my teacher, Lynn Bonnenberger, who I love because she comments on our question of the day regularly, she pulled out a guitar and she was like, Because you got to have faith, the faith, the faith. And now every time I hear faith, I think of her. And yeah. she was my seventh grade English teacher. Yeah. So there you go. And that was like topping the charts. So now you know how old I am. <laughs> Do the math right now, Brandon Payne. But I have, I have. My point is, in seventh grade, I love that my teacher had that personality and that she pulled her guitar mm-hmm. out and did her thing. Yeah. And my elementary school. Uh, He's like, Why are my, we gonna- my elementary uh, elementary school music teacher said, "Imagine a world without music." Yeah. Yeah. And that right. was, and that was where I was yeah. like, "Oh my gosh." Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Who could? Nice. Such. Yeah. A all right. Story. So we are. Uh, we have a couple of things we have to do. First of all, tell everybody where they find your music because you're going to sing for us after, in a little bit here. But where does everybody find your music? Um, my last name is Payne. P A Y N E. That painful music. dot com. That painful music on. It's very Rachel Renabeckish. <laughs> yeah. She's very creative <laughs> like that. Uh, yeah. Instagram. Uh, Facebook, YouTube, okay. all that, all the, all the, all the, all the major outlets. Yeah, nice. they're fire. Yeah, nice. they're <laughs> dope. They're, they're bars. Fleek. Yeah, they're, they're fleek, fleek on fleek. <laughs> awesome, and we love following you. We love seeing where you're going to be. Where are you in the next coming weeks? I have a couple weeks off, so I'm going to oh, focus good. on recording. Um, so Helltown in March. Helltown in March. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so. cool enough. Yeah. And um, did you bring us a junk drawer gift? I did. A JD. I did. It's, okay. It's right here. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> It's not in a fancy bag. I feel like bag. we're watching Lee Turbosic right so now. So here we go. Do a magic okay. trick. Here and we go. To oh, what is this? Oh. What is this? Oh, hand For warmers. For the big game. Uh, they expired in 1996. Can we see them? <laughs> expired. <laughs> Can we see them, Johnny? Can we see them on the that camera? That is All right, hysterical. Cool. Um, <laughs> did you have a ton of them? Warmers. Next week, it. you might want to just see if 1996 still works. <laughs> yeah. So. Right, right, right. Hey, the whiskey guys are here. Let's see if their whiskey yeah, works that far. Yeah, seriously. We'll, we'll try that, too. That is really awesome. I we love pe- Everyone has a different take on these junk drawers, and it's so funny because we all have those kinds of things, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then the next is... Oh, uh, wait, there's more. Oh, there's more. Oh! <laughs> Gotta get that big league chew. Okay, for but listen, John will chew it, even though it was in your pocket, and we don't know how long. He just brought out a bag of big league chew bubble I used gum. to love that. That is so that is, great. It looks old, Just, a, <laughs> just yeah, a pinch. Nice. You know, <laughs> put a pinch in your cheek and your gum, you and go. you go. Yeah, that yeah, is, you never like know when you're going to need a little pinch. Yes. There you go. All right, hit them up with, we love ourselves some musicians, especially when they are Brandon Payne. And so you get to partake in our fun Kenny Pickett. Mm. As Joanne Harris asked us, did we ask Kenny Pickett? We did not. So, But it's okay right. because we paid for the picture. Right. So here's what we <laughs> do is we have one or the other. It's like a bracket. And you pick whatever. And when you pick it, you put Kenny Pickett in whatever one you pick. Makes sense? Mm-hmm. All right. And thanks again to Wick Photography for the licensed uh, can he pick a picture? Boom, licensed. <laughs> All right, boom. All, All right, so, so Konica, get over here. Yeah, real where's Konica? Okay, real quick. I love Konica, that we're now bringing on other people. Just tell us what two wines do we have? Oh, do I tell you the names? Yep. Yes. Okay, so we have a red priorat from earlier, and we have an orange wine from Georgia. Georgia, the country, not the state. 
Oh. All right. Conic Hour Indian right. Psalm. So no pressure. You go for it. You, you try one or whatever one you want to try and first. May Is I point out, they're in our finest of, of China. Yes. <laughs> our red Solo Cup. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So Pittsburgh. I don't right? know how formal I'm supposed to be. I'm supposed you don't to have. Don't put your oh. pinky out. That's weird. Yeah, don't that's weird. spit it that's back so if you weird. don't like it. Don't spit it at anybody. <laughs> Just spit it back in the cup. Oh my god, who even talks about that? Uh, do you have to swirl it around? I don't know if you do different things like when it. it's in a red solo Listen, cup. You have a sommelier face. He's doing it. Yeah, he's just yes. doing it. Okay. I watched my wife do this. So a I don't very know. Sommelier I don't know. face. Okay. A very. S- Here we go. A very sommelier face. <laughs> what is a sommelier face? I don't think I said that right, right there. Oh, he didn't so, like that right, one he's as much. He didn't like it as much. I'm We're handing him our picture of Kenny Pickett on a stick. Wait, and John, does he put it in there? Because then it'll stain it. Well, yeah, let's just put it over it. We'll just kind of hover. Make sure we get it's it. It's a hovering we'll Kenny. Here, I'll what hold camera it. am I going to? Here. All right, here. <laughs> what Rachel angle we need? It's like Wayne's World. Camera one, camera two. Right. Um, This is the white. This okay. is the red. All right, don't put it in. Just hover, Kenny. KP is going to hover over the red hover solo like cup. And I love that Brandon is playing the game. I feel like I need to do that thing from Price is Right. He, okay, I'm sorry. He is doing the Price is Right rover thing. Who will Brandon pick or which one? Oh, it's not going to be that one. The red. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. All right, that's who you pick it. And we love it. What's the reason? Does it taste like more fruity, more dry? I feel like the red had a little bit more flavor to it. Okay. okay. Little, uh, yeah. Fair enough. And that was yeah. the Spanish wine? Yeah, that okay. was the Spanish wine. Spanish wine. So you win a trip to Spain. I'm just kidding. Not at all. Hey. <laughs> Spain, we don't even have Mallorca <laughs> anymore. I mean, it's nothing. <laughs> nothing. Yeah. Brandon Payne, where does everybody find you, follow you, all that good stuff? Because we are going to go to the 4-1 to-dos and then listen to you perform. Okay. ThatPainfulMusic.com, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. All that nice. good stuff. 4 one to do's is something that we do every week. And this week, it's Jeremy and Angie from Discover the Bird. And I love that they're going to be here, but we got to ask them the question of the day. Comfort oh. food for winter. Go to. Um, absolutely. Uh, like chicken and biscuits. Oh, wow. That's Jesus. quite the comfort that's food. That's Ooh, a good that's, one. That's, All right. That's, that you eat All right. You Jeremy and Angie, <laughs> what's happening in Pittsburgh this week? We're going to go to the 4 one to dos with Jeremy and Angie. And then we're going to come back to Brandon. We have a lot going on on your Jag Up Late Night. Rach, I have to vent. Here's my dryer vent. This one time, I had a, found a Lee press on nail in my dryer stuff, and mm. it was not mine. Vom in the throat, vom in the throat. Ugh. One time, my kids left Kleenexes from one of their worst whooping coughs in their pocket. Guys, in guys, guys, you guys are such jagoffs. That's not the type of dryer venting we're talking about. We professionally clean your dryer vent to increase your dry time and save you guys some money. For so four hours. Wet, like 10 pounds you wet. You jagoffs, you need to get your dryer vents clean. Mancini's Bakery, 97 years in business and still getting better. Make sure you follow us on Facebook and Instagram. That's where you will see various Pittsburgh personalities like Gretchen McKay, Super Bowl MVP Santonio Holmes, KDKA's own Mary Hours, and WPXI's Jenna Harner, learning how to make the famous Italian twist bread. Follow Mancini Bakery on Instagram and Facebook, and remember to ask for Mancini's. Welcome to Flamini. Can I take your order? You need a tap it? No, we don't use this. We, we know how to yell the sandwich to the, the cook. Here we go. Let's dig in. It's John and Rachel. We love to dig into iconic Pittsburgh places like Permanis. So we brought our friends from People's Gas. Please call at least three business days before you dig. It doesn't matter if it's a big project or something small like a mailbox. Always call before you dig. I called. We can dig in. So please call 811 three business days before excavating so you don't have to call 911. Hey everyone, Jeremy and Angie from Discover the Berg here, and we are bringing you the 412 do's this week. Hey, you know, Angie, it's winter, it's cold outside. We just did something fun. Yes, it was pretty awesome. So Jeremy got me some snowshoes for Christmas and we tested them out last weekend at uh, Laurel Ridge State Park. So they have a really beautiful um, groomed cross country uh, ski trails and snowshoeing trails. Um, So we, it's it's kind of like a winter wonderland. It's just like in the middle of nowhere. It's about 20 minutes from Seven Springs. It was so beautiful. We had had never snowshoed before, but we had so much fun. Um, There were a ton of people out there. um, She was slapping me pretty much, you know, like (laughs) normally she's the one that's like really cold in the winter. It's like, I don't want to go outside, but she was just like running circles around me, having a good old time. We have photos on our Facebook page from that. And it was just like, you're like being in a snow globe. It was absolutely beautiful. Yeah. So much fun. Yeah. And, 
you know, it's January also, so we are participating in dry January, or as we call it, dry-ish January. Uh, we get a few sneaks. Um, <laughs> you know, there's a lot of fun, uh, you know, non-alcoholic uh, products coming around this month. One of our favorite breweries in Pittsburgh is actually really excelling with it, and it's uh, Two Phrase Brewing in Garfield. They have, uh, when we were there last week, they had four non-alcoholic beers on draft, plus uh, NA cocktails. But one of the coolest things they're doing for dry January is on Mondays, they're doing Mod Mondays for Moderation Mondays, where the entire menu is NA. So if you're looking for some non-alcoholic beverages uh, this month to kind of, you know, slow down like we are, uh, Two Phrase Brewing, it's the place to be in Garfield. But if you're not doing dry January, you might want to check out a Greenhouse Co-op, a new cidery in a down in Greenfield. Um, so we checked them out a couple weeks ago. And the cool thing about this spot is they also it's also a plant shop. So you're just surrounded by plants um, while you're drinking amazing yeah. cider. Yeah, don't so, give me a credit card in a cider at a plant <laughs> shop because I'll just It can get nuts. a little dangerous. Yeah. But they use beautiful like botanicals and florals and other things in their ciders. Um, oh, they were delicious. They were so good. Yep. And, you know, we always love to talk about some new restaurants. But this week, starting on Monday, is actually restaurant week. So a lot of uh, restaurants in Pittsburgh are going to have some prefix menus at some reasonable prices. I think uh, Bay Bay's Kitchen, EYV, Cafe Momentum, uh, Grand Concourse, Mary's Vine. There's dozens of them on the, the restaurant week website. If you want to go check out a new restaurant, and try a lot of new dishes at once. It's a good opportunity at a somewhat reasonable price point, um, depending on the restaurant. But yeah, there's a lot of options out there this week. And also a new restaurant opening up, right? Yes. So El Rincón Oaxaqueño um, is in, just opened their brick and mortar. So they've had a, f a food truck for uh, a while now. Yep. And um, they serving up great Mexican food, um, tacos, burritos, all that good stuff. Um, so that's in on Brownsville Road. They just opened South recently. Coast, yep. Yeah. So check them out. Yep. And, you know, to finish, we have, uh, you know, obviously a few attractions and you know that we love Phipps Conservatory. Their uh, Orchid and Tropical Bonsai show starts this weekend. Uh, it runs through early March. It's, uh, you know, not as, as uh, you know, it's not as crazy as say, the Christmas show or the spring flower show, but if you love orchids and bonsai, it's the place to be. And to finish, you know, the Steelers are in the playoffs. And if you want to go see them, cheer them on, go support a local restaurant or bar that's uh, showing the game on Sunday and, you know, go cheer them on with the rest of the city. So let's go Steelers. And uh, if you want to find more, we are Discover the Berg. Uh, find us at discovertheberg.com or Google Pittsburgh blog. We come up and yeah, we'll see you soon. At People's Natural Gas, we provide clean, safe, reliable natural gas. We're always looking to get cleaner as we continue to protect our environment. And that's also why we support organizations like the National Aviary that are focused around the clock on conservation. Let's hear from them about some of their efforts. A lot of people know about the National Aviary, but not a lot of people know all the conservation work that the National Aviary does. We are part of a lot of conservation work out in the field, and we do things here at the National <laughs> Aviary. Staff members like myself are part of a lot of different projects. To learn more about the conservation work that the National Aviary does, you can check out our website, aviary.org. We're also always working to make our environment cleaner through our work. That's why we've reduced emissions since 2019 by 17% over 2019 figures. All right, hey, my name's uh, Brandon Payne, thatpainfulmusic.com, YouTube, Instagram, my original song, Grow. Days remember so well. Can't 
days that burn like hell Can't feel the highs if you never beat the lows But you were there Just can't see the part of you that lives in me. Y'all dealing with getting older, all the ups and downs it brings. Thinking back to when I was younger, how simple we all seem. Now I'm grown through the happiness. Growing through the pain Now that you're gone It's such a shame You just can't see The thought of you Yeah, let's hear it here in the Cubicle Arena. Have you ever? <laughs> we just created a This is a Cubicle place. Arena. So Brandon, I'm not sure what you. to do. We love it. You, have you ever you sat in you front of two arena. cubicles like this before? I've never been in a cubicle. Well, that's not true. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> yeah. That was great stuff. So make sure you follow Brandon Payne. But thank you so much to everybody who came tonight. Joanne Harrop. Her, please go get her book. You can read it in one night or binge it over a weekend. But you you will need Kleenex from what we understand. Make sure you follow Discover the Berg for everything to do in the 41 to do. And Konica, she was and still is that curry smell. But she is also the Indian Psalm. And make sure you check out your jag off late night. Thanks to Rorick Automotive. And you could come see us at 5000 McKnight Road any Friday. Every Friday. And thanks, Dryer Event Wizard. That's it. We done? We're done. Have a good weekend.